Hello guys and welcome back to the Teacher Bay channel. If you are new here, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button for more updates. Also drop down in the description box for more of my blog and more available resources. And also the social emotional workbook I just put out last Friday. So today on our SPED Talks, we are going to talk about how to help a child with dyscalculia. What is dyscalculia? Dyscalculia is for children who have a learning math disorder or anything that has to do with math. Um, math for me personally, very growing up was very hard for me. But with a lot of patience and support from my teachers, math became a very competitive subject for me to um, do in the classroom to help me, you know, help me with my math and just try and bring out the best of me in my math. So let's just jump right into it of how we can help children with that dyscalculia. So the first thing you want to do is you want to use math manipulatives. Um, you can use counting bears. What I do with my students is I use counting blocks or counting cubes. And these are foam cubes that you can use from the Dollar Tree. Um, you can get them from Hobby Lobbies, or if you are a teacher, you already have these inside of your school. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna use a lot of manipulatives because these students need to have a lot of hands-on math manipulatives. And this goes for the children who don't have disabilities either. Uh, it's just using math manipulatives in general are a great, great way to help students reach those math goals that you have for them number two learn the correct math terms so you want to make sure that you are teaching your child or student the correct math term such as plus addition subtraction um the product or quotient or whatever math term that you, or whatever the student is on their academic level, they're in sixth grade, you wanna use sixth grade math terms. They're in kindergarten, you wanna use kindergarten math terms. We wanna make sure that we are using math terms because this will help the student with recognizing what math problem or math calculation you want them to solve. And not only when they take their test, they're gonna see the same terms on there as well too so let's just call it like what it is and just call it the math term that is appropriate and that's along with like i said the math problem or math calculation that you want them to do let's not call it a different name let's call the name of what the math terminology is let's not confuse them okay okay number three you want to give them access to a calculator and yes you can use this uh, accommodation on a child with an IEP if up to the teacher and the parent and the child's description if they are allowed to attend their IEP meetings but if you are using a calculator try not to use it as a clutch for the child because you want to make sure that they are trying their best to do the math I know when I was growing up they would let us use calculators but not all the time because they we become dependent upon the calculator so Try not to let them use the calculator that much. Like I said, if it can be put on a child's IEP, if they do have this calculator, then you might want to add that as an accommodation. And you can look up here for some more videos about my favorite accommodations that we use inside the school district. Or these accommodations can be used at home for children with. Number four, you want to make sure you include math problems that include real life situations um i couldn't tell you how many times that i wanted my math teacher in elementary school or high school to use real life problems that have to do with real situations because that helped me better understand as a student about the math that they were trying to teach at the time um, it can be a math goal about money that's a good one for children to relate to uh, pizza that has to do with fractions anything that they can relate to it makes it easier for this student to understand math because you are relating it to a real life problem and things that go around the world because as you know math revolves around the world the next thing that you want to do is you want to try to include a graphic organizer for these students because if you have a graphic or organizer it makes it easier for them to see information in a different form um, I also have another video, it's called the Frayer Model, but it's used for English. 
I'm going to try and do one for math, but if you want to look at that example, I'll drop that down in the description box below as well. So the frame model is just you have a topic in the middle, but in each box you show them different ways that they can do it. So math, as you know, is a built-on progression. We have different ways that we can do math. So with the help of a graphic organizer, it helps the child not only stay organized, but it helps them with the steps that they're getting ready to do with the math problem that's already given to them. So for example, breaking down um, an addition, two digit addition problem, you can put it on the graphic organizer and that way they can see the steps of how to solve the two digit addition math problem. Number six, you wanna make sure you have extended time for quizzes and tests. For these students because they they will require extended time on these their assignments or on their quizzes because like I said math to them is a learning disorder and it's very confusing to them and you don't want to um, pressure them into trying to figure out what a math problem is in a quick time period so if you have the time to give them extended time try and do that the next thing you want to do is one of my favorite things personally, and it is to highlight keywords. Uh, we do this especially in our reading as well. I have the students highlight the sight words, but you can also apply it to this subject in math. So anytime they're given a math word problem, have the student highlight in yellow, whatever color you want to use, the keywords and the math terms, such as addition, find the product, which is the answer or whatever math terminology and whatever you want them to solve. So try having them highlight in different colors because that'll help them with seeing terms that stand out to them. And the last thing you want to do is personally every child's favorite and that is to play math games. Who doesn't love math games? And I'll also drop down in the description box some, um, some websites for children with disabilities that has a lot of cool math games on there. One of my favorites is mathgames.com and math IXL because these games, especially mathgames.com because not only do they have math games, but they also allow the child to self-monitor and self-check their own progress on the website. Y'all, it's a really cool website. Like I said, it's called mathgames.com and I love that website. So these are just my eight opinions or recommendations for helping a child with dyscalculia and whatever may work for your child may not work for another child but at least you can use maybe about three or four of these out of the eight i'm hoping that will help your child at school or maybe you are a teacher and it can help you for a student in the classroom bye guys